Welcome back to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Now our politics lead. She says he was armed with an AK-47 and told her he was off his medication and ready to die. One brave bookkeeper near Atlanta, Georgia, potentially saved a school full of children from what could have been an all-too-familiar nightmare. And her words were her weapon. He said that no one loved him, and I told him that I loved him and that it was going to be okay, that we were going to get out safely. And then I told him that um, if he just um, go ahead and surrender since he didn't hurt anyone, that um, I would stay there with him until they came to get him. Antoinette Tuff. A very apt surname. Tough helped the suspect, Michael Brandon Hill, unpack his extra ammunition and put his weapon down. She's a hero. But should Tough and school faculty members like her across the country at least have the right to be armed with more than their wits? Here to talk about it are two co hosts of CNN's Crossfire, Van Jones and S.E. Cup. S.E., obviously, uh, this woman acted as a hero, but after yesterday's standoff near Atlanta and after Newtown, should teachers have the right to carry weapons if they want? Absolutely. I am not for arming teachers uh, against their will, forcing uh, school administrators to learn how to use guns if they don't want to. But if a local school has decided that this is how we want to train stu uh, teachers and deal with the very rare case of a mass shooting at a school, then it should be up to that jurisdiction. And if someone like Antoinette Tuff wants to take it upon herself to try and uh, stop a school shooting, she should be allowed to do that as well. What do you think? I, I spoke uh, this summer to the superintendent of a school system in Clarksville, Arkansas, uh, that uh, has, a, a, there a, a panel has blocked them, but they wanted to bring right. guns into their schools. Was that an encroachment on their rights? Uh, uh, absolutely, and it always is. Look, there is a constitutional right to bear arms. When I go to a college campus, Even in though, a school. I can't, I can't bring my gun onto a college campus. It's a gun-free zone. And we wonder why we have so many rapes on college campus and sexual assaults, because we are disarming people that would ordinarily be allowed to carry guns to protect themselves. Mr. It's Jones. an arbitrary, geographic, sort of uh, gun-free zone that actually ends up putting people in danger. Van, please, weigh in here. Well, first of all, let me just say how happy I am, and I think the whole country is, that we did not have a tragedy yesterday. And, you know, my dad was a, 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 a principal at a junior high school. Uh, he was a big ex-military guy. I don't think he could have done a better job than that woman did using her words. And, you know, the NRA has been saying for a very long time, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Well, in this case, a woman with good words I love you was able to turn it around. So I just want to just take a moment just to, very to reflect lucky. on that. Mm -hmm. that very, very lucky. It does not happen that way every time. Yeah. But I do think it, it's important for us to, to recognize that this time a woman with good words was able to turn it around. I don't understand why we're now wanting to talk about these sort of exotic ideas of arming teachers and that kind of stuff when we still haven't done the, what the law enforcement community is saying, which is to tighten up the background checks. The problem we have right now, we don't know how this guy got a gun, but what we do know is he's a convicted felon. He shouldn't have had one. And right and left can agree that convicted felons shouldn't have guns, and we are not doing what we're supposed to do to keep the guns out Man, of kids' hands. That's not exotic. Do agree. That's not We new. absolutely do agree that dangerous people should not have guns. The problem with this argument is but, always the same. Criminals do not submit to background checks. It is a fallacy well, that you expect a criminal to walk true. into a gun store and say, here's my information, and when I commit this crime, here's where you can find me. Here's my phone number. It is an absolute Fantasy. So this gun control that you all talk about as a salve for things like this is a fantasy. It's delusional. Oh, it's, well, let, let, me tell you, let me tell you something. I, when you say that stuff, it sounds great, but it's not a fantasy when you look at the numbers. The 14 yes, states let's look at the numbers. that have the background checks. Let me finish. The 14 states that have the background checks, there are 39% fewer women who are being killed by their intimate partners in those states. There are uh, this is half a correlation the you're going to make. Importantly, there are 39% fewer cops who are being killed by handguns where we are doing a better job. No law, no criminal law will stop all crime, but you can reduce crime and we're not doing it. So you think background checks are responsible in those cases when the only people submitting to background checks are law-abiding citizens? That's preposterous. What I, what I, it's not, well, you, then what you're saying is that law enforcement, American law enforcement is preposterous because that's what they're saying. No. What American law enforcement's calling we don't even for enforce is for us to get on the same page Van on Jones, background when checks. People, we when can't people apply that. for background checks and in the rare case that they don't 
uh, they don't succeed in getting a background check, we don't even prosecute them. It's, it's a sense well, of false we security. Should, we should change that. Well, I wanna, talk to Joe Biden well, who said listen. it's impossible. We do not have the resources. I want to go. I want to take. We have one minute left uh, after the horrible death of Australian Chris Lane in Oklahoma. Yeah. The former Australian Deputy Prime Minister uh, Tim Fisher uh, told CNN's Pierce Morgan that Australians should think twice before visiting the U.S. I want to hear your guys' reaction to that. Well, in Australia, it is they, another they, example they, they, of murder mayhem on Main Street. Yes, uh, people thinking of going to the USA on business or tourist trips should think carefully about it, given the statistical fact you are 15 times more likely to be shot dead in the USA than in Australia per capita per million people. Van, you were so eager there. You were talking before we even played the clip. Your reaction, uh, does this affect the way uh, that the rest of the world views the United States? Well, well, clearly it does, and I would just say to the people of Australia, rather than keeping your people out, why don't you help us bring some of your good, smart laws here? They banned some of these assault weapons, and they've had a, a dramatic drop in, in the amount of, of murder and suicide. I'd rather for us to be closer to the Australians and further away, and I'm so sorry about this death. Essie, I know you want to weigh in. It's a, tra it's, it's a tragedy, and it's really unfortunate that Australia is maligning an entire city, state, and indeed country by telling its citizens not to visit. Americans are killed abroad every day, unfortunately. This is just something that happens. It's a tragedy, uh, but it's absolutely no reason to boycott the country. I want to uh, go to uh, one other thing about Michael Brandon Hill, the suspect that was uh, hmm. thankfully uh, detained before he, he did anything horrific. Uh, he had, according to police, 500 rounds of ammunition on him. Uh, some people who support greater restrictions on gun ownership and greater restrictions on ammunition ownership would say here is an example of one place that maybe we can all agree on is ammunition essay well it, it's also arbitrary and down to the shooter if you're a proficient shooter you're gonna get off as many rounds as you can and shouldn't we be trying to prevent one death not one plus ten or ten plus one one death is bad enough and for that we should be looking at mental health fixes i understand that this suspect himself was off his medication something that most all of these shootings have in common is a mental health issue that we're simply not addressing because we are focusing on guns and bullets van well I, well we all can agree that we need more mental health i think we need some mental health for the people who are these crazy lobbyists who are keeping us from implementing what law enforcement says will work which is tighter background checks we, we should not live in a world where a crazy person or somebody who's been convicted can do cartwheels through all these big uh, loopholes and land in a kindergarten with a gun and hurt people. And no law can stop every crime. But you, you work together usually to get the, the laws tougher. Uh, the right wing usually wants tougher laws. The only time that when our laws are failing us, they say they don't want tougher laws. It's when it comes to gun laws. I just don't understand it. Then the only intellectually honest and consistent argument, Van, is to call for a 100% gun buyback and a 100% gun ban. And no one is doing that. All right. I, I, I got to stop there. We've already, this is so good, we gave it more minutes than we actually were planning on it. A little, a little <laughs> teaser for people. That's Remember, right. uh, CNN's Crossfire returns September 16th. Hopefully that, that wetted the palate, as it were, with Essie yeah. Cup and Van Jones. Appreciate <laughs> Appreciate it.